Hey, welcome to the Draft Academy. My name is Mike, and in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to create different themes for your HTML and CSS pages. Now, theming is really important because it allows us to change the look and the feel of the website by just a simple click of a button. And that's exactly what we're gonna do up here. So you can see, I already have a little bit of HTML and CSS set up. Basically what I have is a drop down menu, which allows us to choose between three themes, a light theme, a dark theme, and a retro theme. And then I have this little box down here. So the idea is that when we change the theme, the styling of this box is gonna change in accordance to that. So what we've done down in the CSS is we've created this root collection here. And this is just a collection of CSS variables. So this is how we declare variables. And what we can do then is once we've had, once we have these declared, we can then use them down in our CSS. So for example, in the body, I could use these variables to uh, attach them to different attributes. So we could say like the background color is the variable of BG color. So now the background color of the page is gonna match whatever's up here. So if I said this was green, now the background turns to green or we can put it back to white. We can do that with other styles as well. So we could do the text color, that's also gonna be styled with a variable. So we could say that's gonna be the text color. And then maybe we could change the font family as well. That's another thing if you wanted to put up here a variable for the font family. In this case though, why don't we just change it to sans serif. Just give it a little bit of a different look and feel. So now that we've styled the body, we could also style this box. So remember we have this select and then we have the box down here. So let's go ahead and create some styles for the box. We'll say the box is going to have a border, which is five pixels solid. And then we're gonna use another variable, which is that accent color. And so now the box should have a border of royal blue because that's the accent color that we put there. So this is a basic way of using variables to style these two different components. And this is the entry point for theming. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create th three themes which are gonna override this root style. So we're gonna create first a theme light and then a theme dark and then a theme retro. And I have some cool colors picked out, but you guys can also uh, pick your own colors as well if you want. So we can say body.theme light. And here we're gonna define these same three variables that we defined up here. So for the background color, I'm gonna leave this as white for the light theme. And then for the text color, I have, actually we can just leave that as black. And then for this, we can leave it as royal blue as well. So for the theme light, it's gonna be the same as the root styles up there. And then we can say body.theme dark. And for the dark theme, once again, we're using these same three variables. In this case, I have some colors. So the background color is gonna be one, two, one, two, one, two. And then the text color is gonna be kind of like a light color. So that's gonna be F5, F5, F5. And then for the accent color, I have zero, zero, B, C, D, four. Okay, so we have the light theme, we have the dark theme, and now we're gonna get the retro theme. And for this, I have FD, F6, E3. And then for the text color, 5, 8, 6, E7, 5. And then finally, for the accent color, we had B5, 8, 9, 0, 0. So these are just some colors that I had picked out beforehand. But what we have here now are three themes which can override this root theme. And actually, the light theme is pretty much exactly the same. So what we wanna do is attach this so that whenever we click on this select, it changes to the appropriate theme. So we've registered these themes with CSS and now we need to modify the JavaScript so that this select works. So the first thing we're gonna do is just get the select. So we're gonna say select is equal to document.querySelector. And this is gonna grab that theme select. And I think that was its ID. Yes, yeah, so it has an ID of theme select. So we're gonna use query selector to grab that. Now, once we have that, we want to listen for whenever it changes. So we can say select.add event listener for the change. And that's gonna give us an event object. And then this event object is gonna have event.target.value and that's gonna tell us which theme it changed to. So depending on which one we click, it'll be light, dark, or retro. And those values are stored up here in this little value field, okay? 
Now, one thing you'll notice is that those values are the same as these down here. So it's like theme retro, theme dark, or theme light, those match the values that are up here. And that's gonna come in handy because we're gonna do some special stuff in JavaScript that kind of applies those styles. So let's go ahead and create a function here. It's gonna be called apply theme. And it's gonna take in the theme and actually, so apply theme is going to set the document.body.class name and it's gonna set it equal to whichever one of these themes they selected. So if they selected the dark theme, it'll set it equal to this. If they set it equal to the light theme, it'll set it equal to this. If they set it equal to the retro to this. So it's essentially just gonna set it equal to theme and I'm using text or string interpolation here to the theme that got passed in to this apply theme, okay? And now down here in the select, we just wanna say apply theme to event.target.value. So once again, event.target.value, that's gonna match whichever one of these that they clicked on. And then we're gonna pass that and apply it to the document.body.classNames theme. And that matches these over here that we applied earlier. So that's kind of how everything um, connects together and hooks up together. So now let's go ahead and take a look. If I save this and I come over here and select the theme, like the dark theme, for example, now it's changing to dark, retro, it changes to retro. So we have this kind of wired up. Now, another thing that people like to do and that we could do as well is store this in the local storage. So I could say local storage dot set item, and then we would call this theme and then we could just pass in the theme. So anytime we apply the theme, I'm gonna set that in the local storage. And that means that whenever they refresh the browser, we'll be able to load that back up. So down here in the JavaScript, we can say saved theme, and that's gonna be equal to local storage. So this will be when the page first loads up, this script is gonna run dot get item. And here we're just gonna get the theme. Or if there's no theme applied, then we're just gonna get light and then we're going to go ahead and apply that theme. So apply theme, which would be the saved theme. And then the last thing we can do is set the value on the select. So we could say select.value is equal to saved theme. So this down here, this just allows us to be able to store the theme in local storage. So if I save and I come down here to the dark, it stores it in the local storage. Now, if I was to refresh my page, you'll notice it stays there at the dark and that's because it's stored it in the local storage. Okay. So one more time, let's just go through everything that we did. We had this HTML and CSS, we had a select box, and then we had this box down here where it's sort of changing based on the theme. We created some root styling and then we created three themes, a light theme, a dark theme, and a retro theme. And then we applied aspects of those themes using variables to all of our attributes. And then finally in JavaScript, we got access to the select box. And then whenever the select box changed, we applied the new theme, which basically just meant setting the class name on the body to be that theme. And remember we set those, or we defined those as options over here. And then finally, we talked about local storage. So we set the theme in the local storage. And then here, whenever the page loads, we grab that from local storage and set it to the correct values. So that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. And if you liked, please leave a comment and subscribe. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.